Hello and welcome to MJ School of Mining and Geology Private Tutoring YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring the bell for more videos like this. In today's lesson we are going to learn more about plagioclase feldspars. The feldspars are the most common minerals in the Earth's crust. They consist of three N-members, potassium-rich N-member called orthoclase, sodium N-member called albite, and calcium-rich N-member called anorthite. Orthoclase and albite form a complete solid solution series known as the alkali feldspars whereas albite and anorthite form a complete solid solution series known as the plagioclase feldspars. Plagioclase feldspar forms a complete solution series from pure albite to anorthite. Individual plagioclase feldspars are given specific. These names are expressed in terms of the percentage of anorthite end members. Albite which is a sodium-rich N-member of plagioclase occurring at low temperatures of about 1118 has a northite composition between 0 and 10. Oligoclase has an anorthite composition between 10 and 30. Indazine between 50 and 70. Bitonite is between 70 and 90 whereas a northite which is a calcium-rich N-member occurring at high temperatures of approximately 1560 degrees Celsius has an a northite composition between 90 and 100. Plagioclase feldspars are widely distributed than alkali feldspars. The classification of igneous rocks is to a large extent based on the proportions of plagioclase to alkali feldspars. Among volcanic rocks plagioclase is essential in, for example, Basalt that is the most common rock type of all ocean floors usually below a thin layer of sediments called pelagic sediments. Plagioclase is therefore also a major component of the plutonic equivalent of basalt called gabbro. The composition of plagioclase in igneous rocks varies with the temperature of formation. In keeping with the phase diagram, the calcium-rich plagioclases form at higher temperatures than sodium-rich ones. For example, gabbro typically contains labradorite andesine whereas granites typically contain oligoclase. Plagioclase also occurs in a wide variety of metamorphic rocks, where it is usually not twinned. In such rocks where the plagioclase is not twinned, it is difficult to distinguish from the alkali feldspars. Plagioclase can be a component of clastic sedimentary rocks, although it is less stable near the Earth's surface than alkali feldspar and quartz and usually breaks down to clay minerals during weathering. The plagioclase felspa usually alter to clay minerals or sericite. All members of the plagioclase series crystallize in triclinic system. Crystals are commonly tabular parallel to 0 10. Repeated twinning or twinning looking like zebra stripes called polysynthetic twinning parallel with 0 10 is extremely common and is sometimes visible in hand specimen. The hardness of plagioclase feldspars is close to 6. The density increases with calcium content from 2.62 for albite to 2.76 for anorthite. Plagioclase can be colorless, white or gray. A beautiful play of colors called labradorescence is seen in some plagioclase crystals. One of the consequences of fractional crystallization is that zoning can develop. This is uncommon in olivine but is very common in plagioclase feldspars. This is because when plagioclase changes composition during reaction with the melt it requires a coupled reaction involving sodium ion plus silicon ion which equals to calcium ion plus aluminium. 3 plus ion. Not only does some calcium become replaced by sodium in a site with coordination numbers 6 to 8, but to maintain electronic neutrality. Some aluminum has to be replaced by silicon in the tetrahedral site. This is a slow process and often results in incomplete reaction so that compositional zoning of plagioclase crystals results in calcium-rich cores and sodium-rich margins or rims. This brings us to the end of our lesson, let us know if there's something you wish us to cover in our next video in the comment section.